Is there a good case for reducing opioid treatment before surgery? And, and is this a reasonable thing to do? Uh, um, I'm aware that people wait a long time for this type of surgery and can be in considerable discomfort. Um, we know opioids can relieve pain, and we know if they are reduced quickly or unsupported um, or abruptly, it can cause problems, mental health crises that we've seen happen in other countries. And so knowing the rationale for this is really important. Both two parts, is it effective and is it safe? I think those are the, the things you're looking at. This is a part where I think pharmacists, um, pharmacists have a really strong role. When we look at total knee replacements and total hip replacements, most of those people have, are getting that for osteoarthritis. And so I've got all these people with osteoarthritis and there's a large proportion of them taking opioids. And for a lot of your pharmacists in the audience, we probably know opioids are not the most effective medicine for osteoarthritis. So we've got a cohort of people taking a medicine that doesn't have much evidence, that's not very effective and comes with a lot of side effects. So I feel like removing the opioids as a pharmacist, we're not going to cause any more harm because unfortunately these medicines probably aren't doing that much to help to begin with. And what we hope is that we're going to reduce the harms that they are causing as well. So we think there's a good rationale behind it. But the one thing we didn't know before this study, which I think has been really highlighted to me in academia, is just because we know medicines can cause harms like opioids, what we don't often know is if we can reverse them. We know being on opioids can cause harm, but just because they take you off it, it doesn't mean that harm doesn't stay or it's too late. And there's really not a lot of good evidence saying it's reversible. Um, there was only one retrospective study using administrative data showing that patients who tapered their opioids before surgery might have better post-surgical outcomes. But we don't know, or before our study, we didn't know if these patients that tapered were quite different patients than those who didn't taper because there was no randomization. Then they might just be patients who would naturally taper who weren't as sick and so they had better outcomes. And so we just didn't know if these harms were reversible um, until this study. That's useful. And now we've got the background, I'd like to talk about what you did. What was the objective of the study and what was the intervention? The objective of the study was to examine whether this intervention was feasible uh, and effective, whether we could feasibly uh, taper opioids using a pharmacist-led approach uh, before elective hip and knee replacement surgery, and we compared this with usual care. Um, so that was the objective overall, and the intervention that we looked at was a uh, telehealth. So this was delivered over video or telephone intervention where pharmacists and patients met one-on-one -on -one, uh, over a Zoom meeting or over a telephone call and uh, discussed their pain management and opioid use before surgery, approximately three months before their uh, joint replacement surgery, um, with the aim to gradually taper their opioid dose until the day of their surgery. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about the intervention in more detail now? What kind of points were covered? So the pharmacist that we had in this study was based in the community, um, but realistically, a pharmacist working in any practice setting could deliver this intervention as it was done over telehealth. The, uh, for the pilot study, we had one pharmacist deliver all of our interventions, so a superstar pharmacist, but for our next steps uh, to expand uh, the evaluation of this, it will involve a larger team. Um, what was actually done in this intervention? Um, so our pharmacists were trained uh, before the study using freely available resources online. Uh, you, uh, we recently published a training package summarizing these resources so any pharmacist can access them. Um, we also uh, looked at um, the pharmacist uh, involving, so we looked at pharmacists um, having a chat with patients over the three month period and they developed an opioid tapering plan. This plan was evaluated for safety by a pain specialist. Um, so we did have those checks in place um, and the GP was kept in the loop at all stages to ensure uh, that continuity and that collaboration um, within the patient's healthcare team. 
the intervention itself was largely patient-centred and patient-directed. Um, so a lot of shared decision-making was um, encouraged so that the patient um, could lead the level of opioid tapering that they wished. The opioid tapering rate, however, was guided by national guidelines on um, opioid tapering uh, rates. Um, so this was on average 10 to 25 percent of the patient's baseline opioid dose tapered per month. So quite gradual. Uh, and we did uh, monitor for safety and provide uh, alternative uh, pain management strategies, such as the use of non-pharmacological uh, strategies for simple analgesics so that patients were able to taper in a safe and still um, have their pain managed um, throughout this process. 